Hello Year 10, hope you're well. We're going to continue on with our algebra this week. We're going to be talking about factorizing expressions today. We're going to be talking about all kinds of factorizing. We're going to factorize things into what it, we're going to ex factorize expressions into one bracket. We're going to factorize expressions into two brackets. And we're going to do some really fancy factorizing with two brackets as well. So we're going to start off with the easy ones. And then you can choose which ones you're going to do when it comes to your tasks. So example one says factorize fully. Now this word fully is really, really important. It lets us know that we need to take out the highest common factor when we factorize. So for instance, um, I'm looking for 12 and 16. I'm looking to see what do they have in common. Well, I can tell that they're both even numbers, so they, I know they both have 2 in common. I also know that they both have 4 in common. Now, if I factorized and I took out a 2, I wouldn't be factorizing fully, because both the numbers also have 4 in common, so 4 is the number that I have to take out, because 4 is the highest common factor of 12 and 16. So if I take out a 4, um, I then think to myself, what is 12x divided by 4? And the answer would be 3x. Um, alternatively, I could also ask myself, what times by 4 gets me to or what times by 4 gets me to 12x? And the answer to that would be 3x. And then I ask myself, what is 16 divided by 4, which is also 4? And then there we go. I factorize that expression. 12x plus 16 can be factorized down to 4 bracket 3x plus 4. If I wanted to expand the brackets, I should get back to where I started, but I don't need to do that. For the next question, I've got x squared minus 5x. So I need to look and see what do x squared and 5x have in common. And the only thing that I can see that they have in common is an x. And if I ask myself the same questions again. Um, I might ask myself differently. I might ask myself what times by x gets me to x squared and that would be x and what times by x gets me to 5x that would be 5. Now really interesting this time you need to think about this negative as well. So it's actually what times by x gets me to negative 5x and that's going to be a negative in there. And there we go that question's done as well. Um, this third question has two things happening in it. We've got 3x squared minus 9xy. So first I need to consider what do 3 and 9 have in common? And they both have 3 in common. And then x squared and xy, they both have x in common to them. So again, I'm going to ask myself, what times by 3x gets me to 3x squared? And the answer would be I need to multiply by x. And then I'm going to ask myself, what times by 3x gets me to minus 9xy? And that's going to be minus 3, because minus 3 times, times normal 3, times positive 3, gives me minus 9. And x times by y gives me xy. And there we go. There's three different um, examples of factorizing into one bracket. Alright, the next version of factorizing that we're going to do is a very common one. We have already done this already this year. Um, we're going to factorize this quadratic. Now, I know it's a quadratic because it has a power of 2 right here. Um, I also know it's a quadratic because it has an x squared term and then an x term and then just a simple old number. Now, we've talked about a lot of different ways to factorize this. The last time we talked about this in school, we talked about the, using the word team, where two numbers times to the end and add to the middle. So what that means is we're looking for two numbers that times, that multiply to give us this number. They have to multiply to 12 and they also have to add up to give us 7. So let's think about what numbers multiply to 12. 1 times by 12, 2 times by 6, uh, 3 times by 4. And then I can go ahead and check them. Um, 1 plus 12 is 13. 2 plus 6 is 8. And 3 plus 4 is 7. So this is definitely the combination that I want. So I just write that in my two brackets. Bracket x plus 3. Close bracket x plus 4. Now it doesn't matter which order they're in, if I wanted to write x plus 4 and then x plus 3, that would also be fine. So this is the reverse of what we did yesterday. So yesterday we started with two brackets and we ended up with an expression. Um, today we're going to start with an expression and we're going to put it in two brackets. We're going to look at another version of this where the numbers are just negatives, okay? 
All right, exactly the same idea again. Um, this time we just have some negatives to contend with. So again, we're looking for two numbers that multiply to give us negative 10. So they times to negative 10 and they add up to negative three. Well, let's think about what multiplies to 10. One times 10, that definitely doesn't have a difference of three. Um, two times five, Ooh, that one looks promising. There's no other number, so it's probably gonna have to be that one. But now we have to make a decision. Is it minus two times by five? Or is it two times by negative five? I know it can only be one of those options because it multiplies to give me negative 10, which means one has to be positive and one has to be negative. Um, well, if I try to add these two together, negative two plus five is actually gonna give me positive three. Uh, so that's probably not gonna work and two plus minus five is gonna give me negative three. So it looks like that is the pair that I want. So I write them in x plus two and x minus five, done. All right, let's check, look at the next one. So the next one is minus 21. So it has to multiply to minus 21 and it has to add up to positive four. So one times by 21, three times by seven, and that is all that we've got. So it's definitely not one and 21, um, but it could be three and seven. How do we make three and seven into four? Um, I think we do seven take away three, and that means it's positive seven and negative three. So x plus seven and x minus three. All right, and the last one, we've got x squared minus 11x plus 30. So what multiplies to positive 30 and adds up to negative 11? Uh, we've got one times 30, we've got two and 15, we've got three and 10, and five and six. Um, I think it's gonna have to do with five and six. Now it says they multiply together to give us a positive number, but they add together to give us a negative. Well, if two numbers multiply together to give us a positive, either they're both positive or they're both negative. Now, I think it's likely to be these two because the only way that we're gonna add two numbers and get them to be negative is if they're both negative. So I think we're looking for x minus five and x minus six. All right. Pretty much done, we're just gonna look at some really complicated stuff now. All right, last and most complicated version of this factorizing. So in this kind of factorizing, um, it's still quadratic factorizing. We still have an x squared, we still have an x, and then we still have just a term after that. Um, the only thing that's different is all of these ones are going to have a number in front of the x squared. Um, a lot of things are going to look the same. We're still kind of going to use the team. There's just one additional thing that we're going to have to talk about. So when we're looking for what do they multiply to, what do they times to, and what do they add to, instead of just timesing to the end, they have to times to the front and the back. So two times by two is four. So we're looking for numbers that multiply to four, but also add up to five. Now there's not loads of things that multiply to four. Um, it's just one and four and two and two. Uh, two and two doesn't add up to four. No, two and two doesn't multi, oh my goodness. Two and two does not add up to five. So we don't want to use that. We want to use one and four. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna break down the five X into a one X and a four X. So we've got two X squared plus one X plus four X plus two. Now, if I simplified that, I'd actually get right back to where I started. Um, and that's really good because I've done everything correctly. Now, what I want to do is I'm going to split this into two parts. And I'm going to factorize the first bit that I underlined and the second bit that I underlined. So I think about 2x squared and 1x. And I think, what do they have in common? They have x. So when I factorize that, I get 2x plus 1. And now whatever I factorize out of the second um, a lot of my expressions, so whatever I factorize out of 4x plus 2, I should end up with exactly the same. So um, I'm going to factorize out a 2, and when I do that, I'm also left with 2x plus 1. And I can tell that I've done this correctly because I've got 2x plus 1 and 2x plus 1. That is absolutely amazing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to factorize that out by rewriting it. And then I can finish off my answer by writing out everything that's left over, the x and the plus two. So x plus two. 
there we go. Question is done. That is a lovely grade seven question. All right, let's try this next one. The next one has a negative in it, which is always good fun. So we've got a three and a minus eight. So we're looking for two things that multiply to give us minus 24. And we're also looking for two things that add to give us 10. Well, let's think, let, what multiplies to negative 24? We've got one times by 24, two times by 12, three times by eight, and four times by six. Now, because one of them has to be a negative and one of them has to be a positive so that when we multiply, we get a negative, I don't think that the four and six are gonna work because they only are separated by a distance of two. So however we do them, doesn't matter which one's positive or negative, we're only gonna end up with a difference of two. So I don't think it's gonna be those two. Um, if I look at three and eight, they have a difference of five, so I don't think that one's gonna work for us either. 2 and 12, they have a difference of 10 though. Okay, do we think it's going to be minus 2 plus 12? Or do we think it's going to be 2 minus 12? Well, 2 take away 12 is going to give us a negative answer. So, doubtful on that one. Minus 2 plus 12, that gives us 10. That is what we want. Minus 2 plus 12. So, we're going to break the 10x into minus 2x plus 12x. So, we've got 3x squared minus 2x plus 12x minus 8 and then we're going to split this into two bits so we've got 3x squared minus 2x and then separately plus 12x minus 8 and we're going to go ahead and factorize the first expression so that's x and 3x minus 2 and then we're going to factorize the second expression so what do 12 and 8 have in common they have positive 4 in common um, 4 goes into 12 three times, and 4 goes into 8 minus 2. All right, this is great because now I've got these two brackets, which are exactly the same. And then I've got everything that's left over. All right, and there's some more proper grade 7 factorizing. I feel like that was quite a long video today. Um, maybe, hopefully, you fast-forwarded to the part that you wanted. Um, You've got many, many tasks to do today in terms of the actual lesson. You do not have to do all of them. Please just do the ones that are sensible to you. All right, have a good day.